Hello, everybody. So in this panel, the topic of my presentation is crucial role of ADMS in the smart cities. I am Jayant Kumar. I'm vice president in Larson and Tubro. The topic that we have, uh, we have chosen to share a project that LNT and ETAP are working together. And that project is uh, done for the customer uh, named Jharkhand Urban Infrastructure Development Company Limited. Uh, it's in Ranchi, it's in India. Uh, we, LNT, are the prime contractor and we have ETAP as ADMS supplier to the project. With that, let's uh, take a step back and figure out, or I should say that, uh, let me just share what LNT is, and if just for those those folks who are not familiar with, just a quick introduction. Um, LNT um, is a 80 year plus old company founded in 1938 uh, by two Swedish gentlemen, Larsen and Tubro, and hence the name Larsen and Tubro LNT. We have uh, worldwide reach in 30 plus countries. And primarily we are the design engineering construction automation uh, company in the broad engineering field. Overall, we have um, 330,000 people across the globe. We are having roughly $29 billion market cap with a revenue of $21 billion. So it's a big conglomerate uh, headquartered in India. Uh, with a uh, lot of presence in GCC countries and also some other geographies. In the United States, uh, we, we have a few operations. One of the operations is LNT Technology Services, headquartered out of New Jersey. And that's where I'm based out of. If you really uh, take a little deeper dive uh, in the LNT business vertical, especially in the context of the project that we are talking about, um, we have multiple verticals, and uh, uh, my intention is not to go through the complete laundry list here. But the things that you see in the lightly light blue color, those verticals: power transmission, distribution, water and effluent treatment, and LNG technology services. Uh, those are the units engaged in this smart city uh, for the particular project that we are talking about, and. Uh, needless to say that we have a lot of um, business verticals across uh, different domains, um, but I'm going to skip that in the interest of time. So with that, let's take a step back and uh, revisit. The topic was a crucial role of ADMS in smart cities. So let's take a moment to understand what smart city is and what ADMS is and then what the relationship between the two should be. So what you see here in the uh, presentation that smart city, um, as, as we all know, is, is really a modern urbanization initiative across the globe. And it means different things to different people in different parts of the country and different parts of the globe. But just to keep it uh, short and succinct, I just captured the essence of what smart city typically means at a very high level. So it's really a conglomeration of a few initiatives in this urban development. And it ranges from the traditional city, uh, which, was, which was primarily the civil engineering marvel. Uh, but adding to that, uh, it's about uh, uh, adding the dimensionality of information and communication technology, which is telecom engineering and energy engineering. So think about, in addition to civil and civil and mechanical engineering, the energy engineering and telecom engineering uh, as the basis, resulting into the functional uh, portfolio uh, in the city framework, ranging from the transportation, which here is captured as a smart mobility, um, leading to a much more livable community, and you see a smart retail. Um, and uh, definitely uh, when it comes to question of sustainability, uh, you're talking about much more sustainable home construction. So you see a smart home 
And obviously, education is of the paramount significance, especially in India. So those are the core four pillars. Um, and they get embellished further with the ICT on the top, which is which you see is an open data, Internet of Things, and helping out the ag smart agriculture. And in order to uh, uh, get to a much more livable, healthy environment, and that's what you see as smart health in the bottom, and that is made possible by the infrastructure and part of the infrastructure is energy infrastructure and the grid infrastructure. So that's the kind of a portfolio that you have um, when you look at a smart city, uh, what is it that we are trying to achieve. Now, on the other hand, when we say ADMS, it stands for Advanced Distribution Management System. And what it really relates to is, is the distribution company, electric distribution company, um, they have the distribution grid control room and the ADMS is the platform which runs that distribution grid control room. The typical things that they do in, in that activity is how to manage the distribution grid for reliable and economic power supply to the customers like yourself and myself. And in that context, um, the ADMS um, consists of few different applications, uh, DMS itself, which is the grid focused, then uh, OMS, outage management system. The functionality of that one is that how do you go and detect the outage when it happens as fast and as quickly as you can, and then uh, figure it out how to recover the network and get the supply back running. So the overall process is managing the outage management system. And then uh, in the advent of all the distributed energy resources, such as solar rooftops, the storage, and, and electric vehicle, and so on, uh, it has become of paramount significance that how the electric grid supports, facilitates, enables integration of those assets. So, so there goes DER asset operation as the third element as well. So now you can see that um, the elements of this distributed energy resources are part of the smart city fabric and making a city more resilient and more sturdy and, and uh, more reliable from the energy infrastructure perspective is uh, fundamental. And hence the ADMS application, which runs the distribution grid control room becomes key. And that's where uh, uh, it's, it's a clear nexus between the ADMS and the smart city. And in this particular project that we are going to walk through, uh, it's Jharkhand Urban Infrastructure Development Company. It's a state in India. Uh, capital city Ranchi is a smart city. And uh, the utility is Jharkhand Vidyut Vitran Nigam Limited, JBVNL. And it's in their control room. The ADMS is going to be deployed. So with that, um, what are the key components of the project? Um, before again, we go to the project component, uh, just a quick um, um, background. The country um, has started the initiative of 100 smart cities um, roughly six years ago, in 2015. And um, uh, there are a number of uh, projects being planned under that program of 100 smart cities development, and Ranchi is one of them. And the idea of these projects are to really develop um, a real estate plan for a, a, a given area-based um, parcel. So it's an area-based development. And in this particular case, you're talking about 656-acre area parcel in Rachi. And the focus is how do you really make that real estate as a smart city community development with focus on health, education, and hospitality. And in order to do that, what are the infrastructure that you got to have is what is the part of the smart city. So if you really look at um, the, the key components um, in terms of the in smart city infrastructure and the energy side of the story. So on the smart city side, um, you're really talking about the infrastructure for water, electricity, waste management, and the IT infrastructure. 
and these are all done by LNT, um, and that's where we are uh, really uh, undertaking a huge job. Um, and uh, as part of that infrastructure development is the power infrastructure where ETAP comes in, and uh, the scope there is that um, there are substations that need to be refurbished for that particular area block. Um, and I'll tell you in a second what that refurbishment means. And then uh, hooking up those distribution grid segment to the grid control room where the ADMS will be deployed and will be integrated with uh, respective applications as needed for uh, distribution grid control room operation. So with that uh, high level overview, uh, what are the key work packages that go in the smart city and that go into the control room side. And, and you can see the nexus between the two. So on the smart city side, as I mentioned, it's really a real estate development program. So it starts with the land development, captures the transportation, which is the heart and key, um, the smart street lighting um, and stormwater drains are an important element. Uh, I would say that uh, waste, uh, wastewater system and waste water system um, is, is and recycled water system are also important ingredient. And in order to support um, all of these development, the energy infrastructure is key. So that's where it's power infrastructure. Um, and finally, um, when you have all of these, then you're really talking about a green development. So there are a lot of plantation as part of the project as well to ensure that we are developing a green city. So in order to do that, uh, ETAP will be um, upgrading four substation with RTU. Uh, the integration of 76 of RTU in that fabric. And uh, a control room will be set up uh, where the SCADA DMS software will be implemented, which is ADMS part of it. And uh, that ADMS system will be integrated with um, GIS, Geographical Information System, AMI, which is Automated Metering Infrastructure, which is the Smart Metering Development, which is a separate part of the separate project, not part of this project, and so on. And as you can see, after we go in production, we will be maintaining the system for 60 months. So essentially a five-year contract after going into the production and, uh, and and so really talking about roughly seven to eight year journey as we have embarked upon. To give you a quick view of architecture in the control room where ADMS is, you, I'm not gonna go into the detail, but if you really look at, uh, you're really talking about um, uh, four layers. Um, the I would say uh, two major blocks, two layers in each one. So the bottom most, you're really talking about um, the equipment like RMUs that need to get deployed and uh, and, and and then the substation needs to get up upgraded in terms of their communication backbone as well as getting the LDMS set up at substation so that you have the substation monitoring system in place. Uh, so that's the bottom block of the tier. And then those substation data gets hauled into control room for integrating into the DMS ecosystem. And the ADMS ecosystem is, you're already talking about the DMS, OMS, CIS, GIS. And those systems um, uh, are getting integrated right in the control room and they do get the data from the field uh, from the bottom layer as I mentioned to you. So with that architecture, um, you're really talking about the key functions uh, that the control room will be providing are, just to begin with, uh, SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. Um, and uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier on, that when you're talking about smart city, uh, you're talking about advent of distributed energy resources, and hence you're talking about solar rooftops, storage, demand response, electric vehicle, so what's really important is that this SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System, that I'm still in the middle of, is 
connecting the substation, but at the same time, you have the integration capability of the infrastructure platform to connect to the different DERs in future, not part of the current scope. And that is yet another element that LNT will be uh, working with ETAP because LNT does have an integration platform and LNT is uh, uh, working together with ETAP uh, to be a system integrator with great technology that ETAP has. And that's the technology bricks I'm gonna walk through uh, right as part of the slide. So ETAP, very well known company for power system simulation study analysis. So uh, to begin with, everything is about how you model things. And so the first set of modeling is all about the connectivity model. So what you see is network connectivity analysis application. And, and, and right on the heel of that uh, comes that, how do you really manage the uh, network uh, in an operation environment? And how do you switch the networks? And how do you manage the, you know, uh, load switching, feeder switching uh, with the right safety procedure. That's what you have here, switching schedule and safety. And obviously in, in order to manage the reliable grid operation, you gotta be focusing on um, how you do the um, load flow analysis uh, and the state estimation so that you can really come up with the right control settings, be it the, um, uh, online tap changer or capacitor, capacitor banks for various different objectives. And the objectives could be, and that's what you see, world war control. And world war control itself can have different objectives, but typically it's all about managing the world war to reduce the losses and giving the voltage at the right level at the, um, at the, at the tail end at the customer junction so that the losses are minimized. Um, then, other application is distribution load shedding application, and that is usually um, a very important application in case you have the supply demand challenge to deal with, and hence you activate load shedding schemes off and on, uh, more frequently, I would say, not off and on. So ETAP has uh, that application as well. And then uh, fault management system restoration, FMSR, as I was mentioning to you, the OMS, outage management system, um, is uh, the application that has been traditionally focused on how to help manage field crew, but DMS has the functionality, FMSR, which really helps quickly identify by deploying the algorithms in case of outages that where the fault has happened and, and quickly comes up with the plan for how the faulted circuit can be isolated and the system can be restored to the most part of the population while we fix the feeders and fix the faulty section. So that's the FM FMSR is. And then load balancing via feeder rec reconfiguration. And once again, uh, managing, the, um, uh, managing the load balance uh, by doing the switching and configuring the feeders to do that. And we will do all this operational functions by continually um, doing the uh, operational planning, I would say. And typically you do the operational planning in the day ahead and hour ahead time frame. What that basically means is that you forecast the load, you uh, come up with how the operation operational network will look like. And then uh, with the powerful simulation engine that ETAP has, you run different scenarios. And especially in case of advent of the distributed energy sources, it becomes even more interesting and hence ETAP tool becomes so handy and, and, and uh, with, the, with the decades of experience and uh, uh, intelligence got into the simulation engine, helps us uh, define and do a much better operational plan in the sliding window from the day ahead to the hour ahead to the near real time ahead. So that's what goes on in the ADMS application. As you can see that uh, the functionality out of this really leads to um, significant, uh, uh, I would say, uh, benefit and uh, key outcome and impacts, if I may say, uh, that will get realized in, in, in such a construct is that the very first thing is uh, you have a, a, an intelligent OMS function with the FMSR, the one that I just described, which really is geared to manage uh, 
in our engineering language, what we have is the index SERI and SAFI, the IEEE index for uh, average interruption and uh, average interruption frequency and duration. And that gets managed because of the OMS plus FMSR functionality that I was mentioning to you. It also helps us the overall power delivery efficiency, the loss minimization, and, and World War uh, control function is key to that. Uh, it increases system overall efficiency, meaning thereby uh, efficiency in terms of managing what's the what's the load, what's the demand, what's the supply, and how do you really effectively managing the demand against the supply. And and you do that by doing load sharing and load balancing function, which I also managed to, which I also described here. And lastly, uh, the instrumental um, function that you really need to have from the utility side is how do you integrate these distributed energy resources into grid operation to make the uh, city more and more viable for being green? And with the advanced functions that I described, you make the city resilient. If, if there is an outage, the city comes back quickly. And overall, it, it's really a green, resilient, and sustainable city. That's what ADMS helps make a smart city to be what smart city should. So that's the um, um, content I wanted to present here. Um, and I hope um, that uh, uh, gives you uh, what we are really trying to do uh, when we talk about ADMS and smart city and what the crucial role is. Thank you.